Hey guys, Michael here, and I'm back to talk bricks. Today we're talking the Lego Batman movie, the Meet the Villains clip, and new casting news. Love is in the air, and I've got a Valentine giveaway. Just comment and subscribe, and you could win a prize. The clip starts off on a plane, and the captain of the plane is looking for his co-pilot, Dale. The interior of the plane looks really interesting with tons of gauges and levers and other readouts. And we hear the Joker explain that Dale had to bail. The Joker explains that he'll be the co-pilot today and that he always shows up to work with a smile. And he says this in a really sinister way that reminds me of Heath Ledger's Joker and is certainly the scariest we've seen him yet. But hilariously, the pilot is not phased by this at all because he knows that Batman will save the day just as he always does. The Joker, of course, is not happy about this, and he explains that the city is under attack by Gotham's greatest villains. The sequence then cuts to this giant question mark in the road. And we know this is from the Riddler, because if you look at what it says at the top, it says, when is a sleeping child also a crime? Which is a riddle. There's a man driving his car on the road, and he has to swerve to avoid hitting this enormous question mark. The Riddler then pulls off the minifigure's arm, and I think that this will come in handy later. And I'm glad that we finally figured out where this arm came from. The large truck that the villains are using then drives by, and we come upon the Gotham Energy Facility. And given the pizza delivery bike we see here, this scene is straight out of the Scarecrow's special delivery set. The Scarecrow then uses his gas powers to knock the guard out, allowing the villains to drive on through. As the trucks drive through, we can see on the left Two-Face and Captain Boomerang. And on the right here, we can see Bane traveling with Zebra Man and the Riddler. And I thought it was hilarious that Bane didn't sound intimidating at all when he said, hello. And as they drive past on the right here, we can see they're dragging along the car from before which means that character may be very important. The truck on the left features Tarantula on the roof and the eraser driving. And as we can see on the side of the car, the truck used to say Laszlo's Slaughterhouse, but now says Joker's Laughter Truck. And bringing up the rear, we've got the Killer Croc Tailgater. Next, we've got Two-Face in his truck, and I love the hood ornament, which is a gold chihuahua. And they're just busting through cars in the parking lot. But they need Catwoman's help to open up the front door and she hacks into it by typing in the password, which is hilariously password. And Catwoman's character is pretty funny here as she says meow meow in between all of her lines. As the villains break in, I love the look of these two guys in hazmat suits running away, just as the penguin in the duck and cover from the Batcave break-in set breaks in. This next sequence is brand new, and we can see that there's a large cement mixer driving through the halls. And it makes me wonder why they need all these large trucks and even a cement mixer. In the car, we get a great look at Crazy Quilt and also the eraser who's driving. The villains are wreaking havoc on the energy facility, and I love this shot of Polka Dot Man throwing polka dots at this worker. And another one of the funniest shots is Mime Miming to distract these employees, which works perfectly as Tarantula comes down and takes them out. And I love this shot of her jumping towards camera. Then we get a couple funny villain poses. Here we can see King Tut, Orca striking a pose. And next we get our best look at the killer moth from the movie yet. His design most closely resembles the one from the Harvest of Fear set, but features the headpiece from the Mighty Micros. Next up, we've got March Harriet with a carrot. Zodiac Master reading out of an astrology book. Gentleman Ghost, which we've seen before, but I just love the look of this character. And a new character, Clock King, who uses the headpiece from the Gingerbread Man. I really love the look of this, and I think it almost looks a little bit nicer than the original. We get a great shot of Calendar Man a brand new shot of Kite Man, and this hilarious shot of Cat Man on all fours scratching with his claw. Next up, we have Zebra Man flexing, and maybe my favorite, which is Condiment King. And it's really hilarious when the ketchup and mustard just start dribbling out the ends. Just like we saw in one of the trailers, the pilot asks if these characters are even real. And the Joker assures him that yes, indeed, they are all real. And I love how he goes on to explain that the pilot should Google it. This weekend, we also got some more news about the rest of the voice cast. Of course, we've got Will Arnett playing Bruce Wayne slash Batman, Michael Sarah playing Robin slash Dick Grayson, Rosario Dawson as Batgirl slash Barbara Gordon, Zach Galifianakis as the Joker, Ralph Fiennes as Alfred Pennyworth, Jenny Slade as Harley Quinn slash Dr. Harleen Quinzel. In the Meet the Cast clip, we found out about Hector Elizondo as Commissioner Gordon, and we've long time known that Mariah Carey would play Mayor McCaskill. But we did get confirmation that Channing Tatum will indeed be back to play Superman, and Jonah Hill will also be back to play Green Lantern. But one new announcement on the hero side is Adam Devine as The Flash. 
On the villain side, we did know that Billy D. Williams would be coming back as Two-Face. But newly announced, we've got Conan O'Brien as the Riddler, Jason Manzoukas as Scarecrow, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Kate Masucci as Clayface, Ricky Lindholm as Poison Ivy, and Doug Benson as Bane. The next few castings may contain some spoilers, so definitely skip ahead if you're looking to avoid that. And now is your chance. And here we go. And first up, we've got Seth Green as King Kong. Eddie Izzard as Voldemort, which is funny because the original actor is in this movie, and Jermaine Clement as Sauron. And there's also a secret character named Phyllis, played by Ellie Kemper. So with castings like these, we know there's a few surprises out there that we haven't seen much of. And now we're back to totally spoiler-free. I love that just like the Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie isn't afraid to poke fun at itself. And I think this actually allows them to have even more fun, as evidenced by all the humor and the interesting voice casting choices. And this all really goes back to the Lego movie for creating such a fun environment and a canvas for them to paint on. And I can't wait to see it all starting February 10th for myself. But definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think of that great Meet the Villains clip? And what did you think about all that casting news? And don't forget, your comment enters you for the giveaway. You must be a subscriber to win and definitely turn on notifications to find out when my next video is posted because I'll be announcing the winners at the end of some of the videos. And if you like what you saw here, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up down below and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. That's all the time you've got for today. Thanks and have a good one. Hey guys, Michael here. Click here to learn about Wave 8 coming to LEGO Dimensions and the Meet That Hero Breakdown. And don't forget to subscribe.